Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July 19th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, I want to begin this morning by asking you a series of questions. Is Jesus your Lord? Is he your master? Is he the creator of all things? Is he the king of the universe? Has he forgiven and washed your sins away by the very blood that he shed and the life that he gave? Has he promised you eternal reward in the kingdom of heaven? Has he promised to wipe all your tears away, to rid you of this body of flesh that is plagued with temptation to rebel and sin against God. If you can say yes to all of these questions, now allow me to pose this question. What is your profession here on this earth? Are you a carpenter? Are you a plumber? Are you an engineer? Are you a mechanic? Whatever your profession may be, it would be my guess that you pursue that profession with all the tenacity that you have within you, that your goal would be to be the best in that field that you can be. Well, with those questions in mind, let me ask you something that you may not have considered deeply ever before. What are you first? Are you first a plumber Christian? Are you first a mechanic Christian? Are you first an engineer Christian? Or would you be a Christian engineer, a Christian mechanic, a Christian tradesman, a Christian craftsman? You see, I only pose this question because at the age of 51, the majority of my life has been spent with my mentality upon the things of this earth and Christianity was secondary. Even though I wouldn't have told you that, I would have told you that I was first and foremost a Christian. If you were to take inventory of my life and see where my attention was given, you would have said I was first a craftsman and then a Christian. You might have even said if you looked close enough, that I was a preaching Christian, not a Christian preacher. And I think that it's very important for us to understand the underlying issue in these questions because many times all of our effort, time, and attention is given to the things that we do in this life because the things in this life seem to be so relevant, so present, and the kingdom of heaven seems to be so distant so far in the future. But friends, the message of the Lord Jesus and the message of the Bible is that we are to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our might, and all of our strength. As we are told in our text today, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, whatever therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And often when we read this, we think, do what you're doing as the primary and allow God to be standing in the background blessing what it is that you're doing. But that's not at all what it means. It means keep God first. Be first and foremost a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you only had enough time in the day to read something that you were required from your work or your Bible, your Bible should come first. And you enter into your day of work tomorrow having not read or not studied or not prepared because God's word comes first. And this weighs heavy upon my heart because like I said, I'm 51 and for many, maybe the majority of my life, Christ was secondary in the things that I did upon this earth. And I know that I'm not alone in this because I cannot recall one single person 
in my entire 51 years where God was first in everything. Their time, their effort, and their attention was given to other things, hoping that God would bless what it is that they were doing. But it should be reversed. All of our allegiance, all of our desires, all of our time, and all of our attention, all of our resources are given unto him. It's so easy to get caught up in the affairs and the busyness of our days that as we are told in the book of Revelation, he's standing on the outside, knocking on the door, bidding entrance from us. But we are so preoccupied with what it is that we're doing that we have left him outside. And so friends, I simply wanted to bring you this reminder today to keep him first in all things, that you would be ever mindful of his presence in and around your life. Because I can tell you, friends, when we act up as disobedient children, when we fell in sin, it's because we have forgotten his presence. If we truly walked through our day and saw the image of Jesus standing right beside us every moment, how would our conversations change? How would our actions change? I mean, if you knew the preacher was coming to your house on Sunday, what would you do to prepare for him? How many things would go hidden in the closet? And yet you can't hide from Jesus. But how often we think we do. And so friends, I want to leave you again with our text. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 whether you are eating, whether you are drinking, whether you are playing, whether you are working, whatever you do, do all with the mindset that Jesus Christ is right beside you. Hallelujah, friends. What an awesome, terrifying, and life-changing concept. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that your journey with Jesus today is blessed. I pray that he leads you into secret places of fellowship and worship today. And I truly pray that you will be a little bit more like him and a little less like you. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.